the whole band stayed at the chalet all summer long. Then, I suppose, everyone went their own sweet way. Did you ever see any of them again? Oh, no. What about Dana and Leon? They too went their own ways, I guess. And that, Fräulein Walker, is all there is to it. Do you know if she's still alive? Can't be sure, but I doubt it. It was a lifetime ago, Fräulein Walker. Where do you think she might be if she were? No idea. Things went from bad to worse after that summer. Not to mention half the town was razed during the war. Did Dana leave anything here? Any documents or anything that might help me find where she went? Not that I know of. But I suppose there might be... In father's old coffer. Must still be in the loft. Junta bought it from him that summer, so she could use it to store her precious filming gear. She was supposed to come back for it, but she never did. If there is anything that can help you, it will be in there. So feel free to look around the refuge by yourself if you like, even though I don't think anyone managed to open the coffer since Junta left. Thank you, Demoiselle Lenny. Thank you so much. Wow, that pass is breathtaking. I wonder what's inside that tent. Fabled Zilberspiegel. Oh, I wish I had time to watch it change color.
dazzling up here. I can see why they call it the Silberspiegel. Silber means silver, and Spiegel is mirror. The silver mirror. It certainly lives up to its name. Maintaining the refuge must be a huge job. As tough as Lenny is, I hope she has some help when she needs it. I'm not the only one stuck here. <laughs> Ma, pull up a seat, and together we can moan about being stuck here. Thank you, but I have things to do. I hope you can stay until this evening, at least. In London, they have the changing of the guard. Here we get the changing of the colors. I guarantee it's worth the wait. Hmm? English? American, actually. Oh, seeing as you've come so far, then... Besides, it's always nicer to be stranded in good company. From Belgium, myself, on a world climbing tour. Stranded? Didn't you know? They've closed the Teufelskragen. That's the path they call the Devil's Pass. So that's what all the fuss is about. All down to climate change. You mean the thaw, right? Made the pass too dangerous to climb, and apparently resulted in a morbid discovery. Oh? Bodies of resistance fighters, killed while leading refugees to Switzerland. Frozen solid. Resistance fighters? You mean... frozen since the Second World War? But uh, that's what the paper says. Is that what the tent's for? It's a temporary chapel of rest that the rescue team made while waiting for the bodies to be airlifted out. I see. I guess there's no reason to disrespect the departed, even after all these years. I only hope all this sudden interest from excavationists puts an end to the stupid rumors that a strange creature haunts the Zilberspiegel. Otherwise, you can be sure, as soon as the old lady pops her clogs, this place will become run over by those infernal tourists. Can you tell me about this Devil's Pass? Oh, it's on the far side of the Cirque, looking out from the terrace. As you can imagine, it's called Devil's Pass because it's extremely dangerous. Most of all because of the risk of avalanche. Only seasoned alpinists can negotiate it, really. As a professional alpinist myself, what I love about it is knowing I'm climbing in the tracks of courageous climbers of bygone times. There's a real sense of uh, history about it. For example, resistance fighters used it during the war to smuggle vagherons and uh, other victims of the Brown Shadow into Switzerland. I've had some experience with fantastic fauna myself. But what do you make of the so-called strange creature that roams the mountain? <laughs> Just another local fairy tale to pull in the tourists, if you ask me. They say it lives in prehistoric caves. <laughs> and that it's responsible for people going missing. Ooh. Some even say that the mysterious cries you can hear on some nights are the creature calling for a mate. In other words, the usual twaddle you normally get in remote or uncharted places like uh, the high mountain or the deep sea. <laughs> twaddle passed down from generation to generation through sheer ignorance. Surely, from what I read on the way here, the cries could come from an animal native to the area, couldn't they? That is my thinking exactly. No doubt a bear with something caught in his throat. <laughs> it happens, you know. <laughs> Probably scared the tourist one evening or... Uh... Mm. 
Maybe it was young punsters. What about those frozen bodies they discovered at the foot of Devil's Pass? Well, um, due to climate change, the snow line has receded, revealing the bodies trapped in the ice since the Second World War. Most probably resistance fighters and exiles, trying to flee the fascist occupiers and reach Switzerland by the pass. Hmm? I imagine they got caught in an avalanche. Poor wretches have been imprisoned ever since. Until today. That is why the authorities have blocked access to the pass, so they can take the bodies out, identify them, and give them a proper burial. I see. I saw the tent at the foot of the pass through the spyglass outside. Didn't realize it sheltered such a gruesome discovery, though. Right. Thanks for cluing me in. Anyway, I better get back to what I was doing. You are welcome, Fräulein. Lenny's father must have made this stair lift to help her get up and down the stairs. Must have taken him many hours. It's touching when you think about it. This must be Lenny's room. Not sure I'm allowed in here, really. Photos of the refuge. Looks like they're arranged by time period. There are no photos of the occupation of Wagen by the Brown Shadow. I guess that corresponds to when Lenny and her father had to leave the refuge. These date from before the war. There's even one from the summer when Dana worked at the refuge. All these photos go up to the 80s, including my date of birth. This series ends at 2002, three years ago, when I began my journey with Oscar and Hans's train. Pretty impressive. Obviously helps Lenny get up and about.
austere. Looks like a storage room. Mmm, it's cold. Hmm. Another of those cigar butts. There. But who could have left it open? So that's the painting Dana told Lenny's father to buy. Not bad. And similar in style to my painting. Wonder what the others were like. Up real, like the ones used on old cinema projectors. Don't want to break my neck, thank you very much. I must remember to ask Lenny about it. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. Sweet.
Dormitories. I wonder how many people stop at the refuge these days. That must be the piano Dana played on the night she met Leon. The night Lenny told me about. A mechanical stove. Seen better days. Another object with the look of the Varlberg workshop. Reminds me of Hans's automatons in Valadilen. This must be Yunta's coffer, the one Lenny spoke about.
What now, Fraulein? I was just about to doze off. Can you tell me about the resistance medal with your name on it? Sure, I was in the resistance. Not for those medals, though. Nothing but tin charms. You see, there's those who received medals, and those that were killed. And besides, they aren't gonna give me my legs back, are they? No, but they prove you played a part in the liberation of your country. Nonsense. Nothing but bad memories. I'd rather not talk about it. How did you meet Leon Kobatis? Why do you ask? You from the police or something? No. I just thought I'd ask, since you seem to appreciate him. Didn't you? Fraulein. When I said you could look in the guest rooms, it didn't include my room. But yes, like I said before, he was a regular customer even before the episode with Dana. To me, he was like a movie star. What young girl wouldn't be bowled over by a young, handsome alpinist? And to top it off, an Olympic medalist? About Yunta's coffer. What about it? Where did the coffer in the loft come from? In fact, Father made it himself during the long winter evenings. He wanted something more elegant and solid than the old family coffer where he kept the takings. So he made the one upstairs, thanks to the techniques he learnt when he worked in the Vorlberg factory in Valadilen. Valadilen in France? That's right. The price Junta paid was equivalent to a month's worth of takings. Money well spent, though, because it was built like a mountain fortress. You wouldn't happen to know the combination, would you? I told you before, I don't know it. I'll be going then. That must be the notice the Alpinist at the refuge spoke about. It prohibits access to Devil's Pass due to the bodies of the resistance fighters found on the ice. That must lead to the other side of the circus. So much going on in these mountains. Now and before. But I'd better get back on track or I'll end up renting a room from Demoiselle Lenny and exp Lenny's father must have made the stair lift to help her get up and down the stairs. Must have taken him many hours. It's touching when you think about it.
Amazing. Now it shows the view from the terrace. No doubt Yunta must have written this. Summer 1937. The year Dana worked here. Let's see. I filled my last diary last night. Ordered another one, but still waiting for supplies to be delivered to the refuge. Using an old envelope in the meantime. Today invited Dana for a chat after her shift.